When you think of The Bachelor Season 25, what comes to mind? When you stop, close your eyes, and think of the words you associate with the season, what are those words? Disjointed? Drama? Not invested? Problematic? Disappointing? Toxic? Bullying? Exhausting? Disorganized? Apathetic? Flat? Eyes open kiss? Uncomfortable? Boring? Train wreck? Worst? Season? I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Quite frankly, this was, as I see it, one of the, if not the, worst seasons of The Bachelor ever. Why? Why, after what was one of my favorite seasons in Tasha's, filmed just weeks apart, did we get this? All of those words described earlier mashed into one season. Is it because of Matt? Is it because of the cast? Is it all of the controversy from outside of the show bleeding into the final edit? Or is it something else? So welcome to my grading video of season 25, Matt James's season of The Bachelor, where we're going to be dividing this season into four different categories, the lead, the cast, the romance, and production, and give each a letter grade to see if the season passes or fails. But more importantly, we're going to be asking the question, why? Why did we feel the way we felt about Matt, the women, and the season as a whole, and who is the real villain of this season? Season 25's lead, Matt James, is someone I have very mixed feelings for. He came on to this season, like everyone else, not having been on a Bachelor franchise show before. Well, minus Heather. And for the longest time, I thought that this was the root of why I felt I didn't know Matt and why he seemed like a, frankly, boring lead. Oh, I thought, he just doesn't know how things work behind the scenes. Perhaps he was a little lost and is having to catch up. There had to be something wrong. Because all through the first seven episodes of the season, right up to hometowns, Matt felt like a background actor in his own story. Every part of the first half of the show revolved more around Matt being reactive to what was happening in the house than it did around Matt's journey for love. Quite frankly, the actual lead for the first five episodes was Victoria. She directed almost every major aspect of what went down until she left. The Marilyn drama, the Sarah drama, the escort drama, co-directed by Anna, and production gave her the screen time that comes with that. By the way, follow Bachelor Data on Instagram. And by the time Victoria was gone and the MJ drama that followed was finished, I was left wondering, where's the romance? Does Matt have a strong connection with anybody? Isn't that the point of this show? I mean, the only romantic footage we're getting is the occasional one-on-one -on -one date or a bit of alone time on group dates. And speaking of group dates, those got completely gutted. How many of those were just cut right out of the show? Which sucks because not only is it confusing for the audience, it's also such important footage as it helps us get to know Matt or the cast and invest ourselves in Matt's relationships. So that when it comes down to who's going to be eliminated that week or who's going to get a hometown date or who's going to end up with Matt, we actually care, we're invested. But this season, it felt more like the show was getting us invested in wanting a person to get eliminated, rather than not wanting our favorites to get their heart broken. Because more screen time was given to this... I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And I can express myself with name calling when I choose to. I have a permit. This just says, I can do what I want. Then it was to this. Well, every time you come in the room is a wow moment. Thanks. So it's frankly hard for me to give Matt a true grade. Now imagine for a moment there was a big superhero Hollywood blockbuster movie and it's crap. But later you find out that all the important parts were cut out of it. And in fact, there's another version of the movie done by someone who actually cares about it and says, no, 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 there's so much more going on here than what that first idiot tried to do. Oh wait, that's a real thing that happened. And after seeing all the footage that was cut from this season of The Bachelor, footage that looked actually fun... <laughs> Flesh-eating worms? <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one, region. <laughs> footage that looked like it incorporated romance? I gotta find him first. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> 
<laughs> I felt like the season we got was edited by Joss Whedon and that somewhere out there, the Snyder Bachelor cut was waiting and it was actually good. So, like I said, it's hard to grade Matt because I don't feel like we got the whole picture. What I will say is I don't think Matt was ready to be the lead and I don't think he was ready to get engaged. That being said, do I blame him for taking the role? Not at all. I think all of that is on casting. I mean, if you cast Benjamin Franklin as the lead, you can't be surprised when the season gets freaky. Oh, well, you're very saucy. <laughs> Seriously, dude was apparently a big old womanizer. But in the same way, when you cast someone who might not be ready for an engagement, as was the theme of this whole season pretty much, you can't be surprised when he doesn't want to pop the question. I don't put that entirely on Matt, and I'd rather have someone at the end of the day say they're not ready to be engaged than get what Peter did. So when it comes down to a grade, if I have to give one, I'm giving Matt a D+. While I felt there was a lot cut out of Matt, and that's not his fault, the thank you for sharing that stuff was pretty bad. Thank you for sharing that with me tonight. Thank you for sharing everything. Thank you for sharing that again. How will you inspire Miss Young? Thank you for sharing that message with me. And he seemed a little lost trying to handle the drama in the house. Ah, uh, the cast. What can I say? I don't think we've had a group as bad as Season 25's cast since Season 24's cast. But while the negative Mean Girl drama seemed to reign supreme over the season, there were bright spots thrown in there. Abigail, Brie, Maggie, Goatfoot Lady. But I'm the goat. <laughs> but what did all of those women have in common? No screen time. Like, did you know that Maggie and Abigail had an adorable friendship? Why leave that out? That stuff's endearing. And there were other bright spots as well. Even though Katie was wrapped up in the drama a lot, she pointed Matt towards the escort gossip which we were all screaming for someone to do. Michelle was a breath of fresh air, but unfortunately was brought in on episode 4. Serena was present, but not really that into Matt. I honestly couldn't tell you if they were trying to give Jesenia a good or bad edit they flip-flopped so much with her this season, but then there was Victoria and her sidekicks. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know how I feel about her. The thing is, I'm not saying there shouldn't be a Victoria on a season. There just doesn't need to be so much. A villain type figure is a staple to this franchise and of course I like drama on the show, but when that drama overshadows the lead and in such a vile way, I'm not enjoying the show anymore. I'm basically just hate watching at that point. That's not why I'm here. I'm here because through all the season, through all the drama, we're supposed to break free into a potential love story. And that love story becomes all the better because it made it through the drama. When you take that away, it's just toxicity with no payoff. But still, I don't entirely blame the cast. Cause if the Bachelor people were so easily able to cut out whole dates from the show, couldn't they have also cut out the toxic stuff too? Or at least toned it down so we could focus on other aspects of the show like getting to know these people? I feel like we didn't get to know the cast at all, and those that I did get to know only got to that point because it was like hometowns. So at the end of the day, this cast is getting a D-. It's those bright spots in the group that stand out and save this grade from being an F. But the Mean Girls gossip and bullying was brutal and it took the season hostage, even if that could have been edited out. There is a giant area that's colder and emptier than it possibly could be. And we call these voids, and some of them are quite large. They're called super voids. One of these super voids is the incredible new season of The Bachelor. Ah, uh, the romance. Let me ask you this. What happens when you go into an exam and leave your page blank? That's right, you get an F. There you go, romance grade. But what's worse is that it seems like so much potential romance, even if the show ended without an engagement, was left on the editing room floor. Which leads me to my main point. With all of this, bad editing, focus on the drama, mishandled casting, it's time for... When I think about the main problems with this season, why I think it was so bad, everything draws back to one place. The decisions made by production. Why don't I feel invested in Matt's love story? 
well, they never gave us time to watch those relationships develop. Nor did they give us time to invest in Matt, which we needed more than ever on a season where the lead was new to the franchise. Why did I not really care for a lot of the women? Well, we didn't get to know any of them until late in the game. Not enough time was given to learning who they are and why we should care. And if they did dangle some of that in front of us, like in episode 1 with Abigail, they never doubled back to it. Abigail was dropped like a hot potato after that. Some of these decisions from production left me head-scratching. Why show whole fun group dates when we can instead perpetuate rumors on national TV? Why let the group have a regular cocktail party in order to help relationships develop when we can instead get Heather on here right before hometowns, knowing full well she's entering a group that's already tired of new arrivals? Oh, and then let's spend 30 minutes of an episode covering that and cut out more group date footage. Or how about this one, why vet contestants? I mean, what could go wrong, right? It's not like we could have avoided having a season with the first black bachelor picking the woman with photos of her at an antebellum ball. Sorry about that, Matt. Or worse, they did vet contestants and just didn't care. What a complete fumbling of a season. And what befumbles me even more is that it came after Tasha's. How can you go from having a season that took the time for us to get to know the cast, kept the drama in check and never let it overshadow the romance, gave us something to feel good about, and then immediately go into this? They should know better. The handling of Matt, the handling of the contestants, what they decided to cut from the show and leave in, the way they vet contestants, the way that both Rachel Lindsay and Matt James have deleted their Instagram accounts because of hateful, harmful, and violent messages they've received. The show needs to protect their contestants better. They need to focus more screen time on cultivating what the show is actually supposed to be about, the romance. Forget Victoria, production is the real villain. Now, apparently, things behind the scene have gotten even worse because of one man, or rather the absence of one man, Elon Gale. For a long while, Elon was the guy when it came to Bachelor producers. Then he stepped away from the show, and his absence has left a power vacuum where producers are trying to one-up each other and take his spot as top dog. And guess when he left? Right before Colton season. So maybe that explains the drama overdrive we've been seeing these last few years, but it doesn't excuse it or the handling of this particular season. Like, could you imagine if all of those producers vying for top dog status put all of that energy into making it the most romantic season ever instead of the most dramatic? Could you imagine the kind of show we'd get? We need someone on the show dedicated to vetting contestants, or at least doing a better job of it. We need someone whose sole job it is to direct the romance aspect of the show and not just have people pushing the drama level closer and closer to the edge. We need people more adept in protecting contestants. Because what we got from production isn't just an F, it's an automatic fail. And I feel like so much was completely fumbled on the production side of things that I'm missing stuff that I could have talked about in this video. And so with that, I give the overall grade for this season an automatic fail. Production let us down so deeply on so many levels this season that I can't even fairly grade it. It's just an automatic fail. And unless there's a Snyder Cut hidden somewhere, we need to look forward to The Bachelorette and demand something better. So that's it for this video grading Matt's season of The Bachelor. I hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to leave your thoughts on the season down below. We are now in the Bachelor off season and will be until May when The Bachelorette starts, but of course there's still more content to come while we wait and if news or previews comes out, I'll be covering that here on the channel as well. So until then, Bachelor Fan Take, out. There is a giant area that's colder and emptier than it possibly could be. And we call these voids, and some of them are quite large. They're called super voids. One of these super voids is the incredible new season of The Bachelor.